Good evening, I'm Ryan Bonazzo. Thank you for joining us. Organizers of the Thunder Bay Rib Fest say they're grateful for strong community support as the event wraps up a second year under COVID restrictions. The drive through event drew lineups to its new location at Lakehead University from Thursday to Sunday. Two familiar visiting ribbers returned this year with one local restaurant, Daytona's, joining them. But while the ribs might steal the spotlight, organizers say what makes the event special is the cause it supports and how the community steps up to help. And all of this is in support of Our Kids Count. We do amazing programs in the community um, for our families. We do our food kitchens. We have our community breakfast coming up. We have our parenting groups, big brothers, big sisters. It's an amazing organization. Just the amount of volunteer support that we get to come out to this, to run an event like this, is amazing. And that's really the highlight. Shortly before closing up on Sunday, organizers hoped they'd match last year's total of around $60,000 raised for Our Kids Count. The event is expected to return to its usual festival model next year if public health measures allow that to happen. Candidates in the Kenora riding are officially on the move looking for support in the wake of the snap election call from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau earlier this month. Tonight, we profile Green Party candidate Remy Rote. The Greens saw a notable increase in support during the 2019 election in Kenora. Jonathan Wilson has more. In 2019, the Green Party placed fourth in the Kenora riding with slightly less than 1,500 votes, the party's best showing in the riding's history. This time, Green candidate Remy Rout is hoping to not only boost those numbers, but let voters know there is an alternative to the big three parties and that the Greens will directly represent constituents. It's not just about party politics or party policies. The Green Party is grassroots. So each constituency is a little bit different. They have different requirements. We do have some core values, but each constituent is a little bit different, the same as people. Prior to putting his hat into the ring this year, Rout was involved with various political parties, but was drawn to the Green Party due to the autonomy that is given to candidates. As well, his most recent business venture was geared towards green technologies. When he speaks with voters, he says it is important to take the time to hear what their concerns are, and so far has found what he believes are the three biggest issues in the region. Number one, every like I said, it's not just about climate here. It is important because of the beauty of this area. Number two, it's about opioid crisis and homelessness, but those are connected. And the other one that comes in is safety. People are looking for safety. With just three weeks left in the campaign, Rout feels optimistic that he can make a case to voters that he is the right person to represent the riding in Ottawa. Change needs to happen and change can only happen when people vote and voice. So let's hope for the best. Jonathan Wilson, Northwest Newsweek. The Thunder Bay District Social Services Board celebrated the 50th anniversary of its Windsor Street townhomes this past week, and they also marked the opening of a new tenant technology hub in the Windsor Street Resource Centre. Mitchell Ringo's reports. The people living in the Windsor Street area came together to celebrate the townhome's 50th anniversary even though it was technically the 51st, as they were not able to have a public event last year due to restrictions. Over the past five decades, the DSAP has built many community housing projects in the area, along with an emphasis on tenant support, with five workers dedicated to that task and many other organizations coming in to provide support to the community. DSAP Chair Lucy Klusterhus spoke about why this area is so important. You can see that uh, it's a real family-oriented place. Uh, the children are always out there playing together, families getting to know each other, helping each other move in and out. And uh, it's just a, a real community centre, and that's what's good about it. And there is even more to celebrate with the new addition of the Technology Hub in the Windsor Street Resource Centre. Chief Administration Officer Bill Bradica says it's added a whole new method of opportunity for the individuals and families in the Windsor Street townhomes. Today as well is the opening of a technology hub. So that's new, uh, to be able to allow people who otherwise may not have the means to be able to access a computer with internet to, to be able to access online supports and uh, do things like job search and schooling and things of that nature, so really excited about that. 
We talked to some of the local residents about how these improvements have really impacted the community and overall quality of living in the area. Yeah, for the last uh, year and a half, two years, we started to get a uh, really improving. Before it was pretty rough here. Yeah. See, he's doing pretty good now. Honestly, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty scared when I got an offer here, but you know what, they've cleaned it up a lot through the past couple years. Um, a lot of programs, we got our kids' account in Unit 16, and then they got the youth program, and um, all the kids, they all play together. It's really nice. Bradica says they will continue with proper maintenance and include them in their capital planning, with a goal to continue to improve the townhomes as much as possible. Mitchell Ringo's TBT News. A tradition of giving continued this year. Students from Fort William First Nation took advantage of cuts for kids, allowing them to get brand new haircuts before heading back to school. Cosmo Manella, who owns Trends Hair Studio and the New Wave School of Hair Design on Victoria Avenue, started offering free cuts four years ago. He was inspired after customer Marnie Greenwald, a member of Fort William First Nation, told him many kids in the community had never had a professional haircut. Manella and Greenwald say the smiles on the kids' faces is what motivates them to carry on the tradition. It just makes me feel great, you know. It's, uh, it's a good feeling to give, some, to, give, uh, to give out instead of we get back, you know. You see this, like, million-dollar smile when they come sit in a chair, put on a little robe, get their hair done, and I send them on their way with some pizza. So the kids are so so excited and ready for school. Nine local stylists and students at the New Wave School volunteered their time Sunday, and about 40 kids walked away with new dues. Magnus Theatre is coming back once again for its upcoming 50th anniversary season after a lost year due to the pandemic. The theatre plans to return for a full season of main stage programming. The first of six plays begins September 16th, with the season wrapping up in May of next year. Magnus's last show was a musical presented outside in September of last year, but since then it's been a waiting game. Artistic director Tom Curry says after such an extended absence, he's happy performances can finally resume, even if only at half capacity due to COVID restrictions. Curry says the actors are eager to get back on the stage, and he believes it's important to bring performing arts back to Thunder Bay. I think performing artists need to get back out there. I think um, dancers need to dance again, musicians need to play again, actors need to be on the stage, storytellers need to tell our stories. So, you know, we're willing to, to, to a certain extent, take that hit. Um, because it's, it's, it's important that our society starts to function again, just in terms of you know, people getting out and, and getting their, their hearts and souls spoken to by performing arts. Despite the dates of this season's six new plays being locked in, Curry says the theatre is ready to pivot at a moment's notice if restrictions loosen and make it possible for more audience capacity, or if things get worse and the theatre has to shut down once again. One of the Thunder Bay area's most scenic hidden gems is seeing a lot more visitors in recent years, in large part due to social media. Wolf River Falls near Dorian has been a popular destination this summer, at least for those who can figure out how to get there. Jonathan Wilson has that story. It's commonly known as Wolf River Falls, but longtime residents around here also refer to it as Red Rock Falls. Allison Landry and Alex Brennan need just a few words to describe this spot to their friends. Piece of paradise. It's so nice here. It honestly is like paradise. I'd say what she said, pretty nice here. <laughs> the water's super warm. It feels like heaven. Some people travel to tropical getaways for a chance to stand under a waterfall without realizing there's one right here in this region. And most people who find this place come back more than once. Yeah, the waterfall is just beautiful and you can go behind it and it just adds a whole other perspective to a waterfall kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, you get a lot of bang for your buck too. It's, it's a relatively short hike yeah. and beautiful scenery. Now it should be noted that the trail down here to the gorge at Wolf River Falls is both steep and pretty treacherous. So it's recommended that anyone coming down here be agile and experienced. Hobby photographer Peter Greger ventured here all the way from Pickering, Ontario and managed to make it down to the gorge with his son, their dog, and his camera. 
Uh, just getting some shots of the waterfall with the sun radiating through it and shadows and a bit of a rainbow came off, off the, uh, the water when I was taking my pictures, so pretty neat. Gregor found out about this place like most people do, on the internet or on social media. Landry grew up around here and has noticed a big increase in visitors in recent years. And with the pandemic barring many activities, more people are looking for a scenic hike. I saw it on the internet. Just looks absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful. 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 That pretty. When I was little, I think only my family and friends knew about this place. And then one post went out and it was on Thunder Bay hiking trails and now there's always people here. Buzzfeed posts about like top 10 uh, best hide like hiding spots in Ontario and stuff like that, like those little lists they do. Yeah. And this is on it, like top 10 mm -hmm. waterfalls in, yeah. in Ontario, stuff like that. To get to Wolf River Falls, turn onto Dorian Fish Hatchery Road and then follow the twisting, turning, bumpy dirt road for a good half hour. Maps and tips are available online, but there are no trail signs to be found anywhere along the way to this picturesque waterfall. Jonathan Wilson, TVT News. Well, you can see the pictures there, absolutely stunning. Kurt, I have been there. I know you're new to the area. <laughs> yes. You haven't been uh, yet, but uh, I, I would highly recommend it. It is quite a hike, though, to get there. Yeah, I definitely want to get out there, especially before more people get out there. If they didn't know, they definitely know now. Um, everyone I meet seems to give me another hiking destination. We've got highlights about the Red Bull cliff diving with Molly Carlson right after the break.